So what we're gonna do is to click on circuits, and then we're gonna click OK. So we're gonna have here circuits on the left hand side. So here on the right hand side you have a component libraries. If it's not showing up, you click on view component libraries. Uh, we're gonna create like a very simple filter. So I'm gonna uh, go over here in capacitors cap. I'm gonna drag and drop. I'm gonna press ask with the shift and alt just like our 3D products, you can zoom and pan. Uh, if you click on the component and press Ctrl R, you can rotate or you can right click. And then uh, of course you can rotate or flip horizontal or vertically. Um, I'm gonna connect the ground in here, press ask again. I'm gonna select everything, press Ctrl C, Ctrl V. I'm gonna copy and paste um, four times. So um, the capacitor one and capacitor four, I'm, instead of just changing the value here, I'm just gonna create a variable called C1. So whenever I change C1, it would change the value of those two capacitors. I'm gonna repeat the process for the two capacitors in the middle. I'm gonna use C2. And I'm gonna place some inductor. So I'm gonna here, uh, go down here inductor. Um, I'm gonna place uh, three, uh, inductors. I'm just gonna have to connect them. Uh, you can click here and create a wire. And in order to solve this in the frequency domain, I have to place ports. So I'm gonna create a port in here and a port in here. Press ask and if you want you can just drag and drop. So uh, here in circuits what you want to do now is select the band, a uh, frequency band you want to solve. So right click in analysis, add next in solution setup, and add a linear network analysis. Here on fre frequency, uh, click on edit and you know put something like zero to uh, four gigahertz with a four thousand. Uh, that's fine. Uh, and hit OK. Uh, so if you right click here on linear frequency and analyze, you, you're going to run this simulation. So uh, it should run really fast. You right click on results, create standard report, rectangular plot, and select S11, S21, click uh, new report. And here we go. So this is S11 and this is S21. You can change the color, for example, um, like blue. But um, I'm just going back here to circuit. I can double click here. I'm gonna drag and drop this report. And I'm just going to adjust the, the height and width of the report. Uh, if you want to, you can actually tune those values and see uh, how the response of the filter will change in real time. So for this, go to circuit, uh, design properties. And here on local variables, um, you see the capacitors. But if you want to, you can also add the inductors. I'm going to select those two inductors here. I'm going to uh, use like a L1 variable and for the middle one I'm gonna use uh, L2. Okay now you go back here to circuit design properties and under local variables tab you go to tuning and you can include all of them and you can select the minimum value the maximum value I'm just gonna put this like a um, hundred um, like Faraday uh, maybe a hundred <laughs> Okay, uh, so now if you want to see the results by turning those values in real time, you just have to right click on Optimatrix, turning, um, and that's it. Uh, you can just change the value in here of one of those uh, components, and it should run in real time. So now you can uh, actually see the effects of the inductors and the capacitors on the response of your filter. If you want to, you can also use optimization algorithm. So for example, you can go to circuit design properties. And here, instead of going to tuning, there's an optimization design of experiment. You can include all the variables, select the minimum and the maximum value. And here in Optimatrix, for example, instead of tuning, you can add the optimization. So you can change the optimizer, just keep this one. Uh, and you have to click here on setup calculations and define your goals. It can be more than one. In our case, I'm going to set S1, add to calculation. So it goes here down on the back. I 
click done. Frequency range, I'll add it. So I'll say that uh, from 0 to 400 megahertz. I want the S1 to be bigger um, than add it as a numeric value, uh, minus 1 dB. So if I do this, you can see that I have now under Optimatrix this optimization setup. I can right click and analyze. So here we have the results. If you want to take a look at all the simulations, you can right click here, optimization setup one, view analysis results, and you see the plot. And, you know, if you click on table and cost, uh, click again. So all of these, they are simulations or the values of the components that satisfy uh, that uh, optimization criteria. You can click apply to one of them and uh, it will automatically apply those values uh, you know, to the variables you created. Another thing that you can do is to simulate in time domain. So imagine instead of just having the behavior of the filter in the frequency domain, put this here on the back, uh, you want to simulate this in time domain, so like a digital signal going through this filter. So I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy and paste. I'm going to delete the ports. I'm going to rename the those nets. So click here on the wire. You see that the net name is automatically assigned. I'm just going to rename this to Alt. And here in this one, I'm just going to rename this to In. Um, so what you want to do is... Um, in the, on the output, I'm just going to place like a resistor. I'm going to connect the ground. Control G is the shortcut to ground. In here, uh, on the input, I'm going to put a source. Under independent source, I'm going to select uh, V pulse. So V pulse is a pulse signal source. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to change the values of this source. Sorry. So you can click here. Uh, I'm going to put one voltage amplitude, um, 5 nanoseconds rise time, 5 nanoseconds fall time, 40 nanoseconds pulse width, uh, 100 nanoseconds the period. If you want to know which one of these fields is, you know, what do they do, you can double click here. Um, you see all those fields. You have a, a, you know, a short description in here. Uh, you can, of course, resize to read the full description. And under component, you can click on the v pulse in this case to open the help. So <clears throat> right now, what I'm going to do is uh, right click on analysis, add Nexium solution setup. And now I'm going to run a transient analysis. I'm going to run, for, uh, run this for 70 nanoseconds. You can right click, analyze. And you can create a report. Right-click on results, create standard report, rectangular plot. Now, change the solution from linear frequency to Nexium transient. Um, and now um, you select uh, the in. Uh, so that's the input signal. And uh, the out, you can add trace. That's the output signal. You can see uh, we're plotting the nominal values. Nominal means that we're plotting for these values here. Again, you can change the color if you want to. Uh, I'm just going to change this. You can double click on circuit one to go back to schematic. I'm just going to go back here. Um, you don't have to add those plots here. I just think it, it helps a little bit having the schematic and the plot uh, you know, in the same window. But you don't have to do this. Now, if you right click on Optimatrix Tunning, uh, you see that we still have here the the linear frequency. Uh, you can change the values. It will update the, the results here in the frequency domain. But you can uh, now select only Nexium transient. And so when you change from linear frequency to Nexium transient, you can actually see the waveform in time domain, how the change in the capacitors and inductors uh, will affect the time domain waveform. So you can actually. Um, you know, keep switching between the time domain and the frequency domain. So you can actually tune your circuit, um, you know, in any way you want. One thing that I noticed is that they don't work both at the same time. So you're going to have to select either the linear frequency or the next in train.